just wanted to say um, we are the library staff from the Thayer Public Library who got together to talk about bookish podcasts. We wanted to share some of the podcasts we've discovered over the past year and have been enjoying. If you've never tried listening to a podcast, maybe you'll hear about one that will um, intrigue you enough to make you give it a try. Uh, so we're going to kind of go around and just talk a little bit about some of our favorite podcasts. Um, and we are going to start out with Carlene. Hi, everyone. We have a lot of people that come into the library for looking for the next great mystery. If you're a mystery lover like me, then you would like the podcast, My Favorite Murder. It is a true crime comedy podcast hosted by Karen Kilgaroff and Georgia Hartstock. Since its inception in 2016, it has broken download records and enthusiastic fans come out in droves for their sold out shows worldwide. On the podcast, they go into detail about the events leading up to the murder, the murder itself and how the perpetrator got caught. This is great for true crime fans and mystery lovers. Sometimes books are mentioned during the podcast and books have been written about most of the crimes. The hosts have even written a book themselves called Stay Sexy and Don't Get Murdered. <laughs> you wouldn't think that comedians talking about murder would make for a good podcast, but it does. They make me smile and laugh while listening to horrific crimes. I know how that sounds. A lot of people have a fascination with death. It's like driving by an accident. You can't help but look. Karen and Georgia kind of tell you how not to get murdered. This is by far my favorite podcast, and if you're a mystery lover like me, you should check it out. There is some swearing. I just want to warn you about that. Um, it's, it's good for a lot of different ages. My niece is in her 20s, and she has listened to this many times. She loves it, and I'm just slightly older. You know, but it's a very good podcast. It's it's an interesting. It's like reading a mystery book, except you find out who did it most of the time, and it's it's really interesting. There was one I watched. Um, I listened to. I keep on saying watch. I listened to last week about pet love, pet rescue dogs, and that rescued their owners from basically getting murdered. You know, when they intervened and got in between, warned them that there was danger. And it's it's really interesting, and I really love it. Christina is the one that told me about this one. Yeah, I, um, I've known about this one for a little while. A friend of mine got me into it. I feel like that's how this podcast works, is someone gets you into it, and then you get someone else into it. Um, the, the two girls, it, it just, it works really well. Um, I saw them live a couple of years ago. So uh, their tapes for a lot of their live recordings are available um, in whatever podcast app you're using. And there are a couple that are live from the Chevalier uh, Theater in Medford. And the stories that they talk about when they go on the road are from like places in that state. So one of the, the ones they talked about, I think was the Great Molasses Flood. So there's a couple of um, true crime and they, they really break it down um, you know, the details that you'll want to know in the story. Um, I've also gotten a couple of book recommendations from listening to them. One of the ones that I, I read was about the Golden State Killer, and it was written by Michelle McNamara. I think it's All Be Gone in the Dark. Love that. Absolutely love that. And I wouldn't have found it if it wasn't for listening to their podcast. Yeah. I, I just want to jump in there because I listened to the audiobook Stay Sexy and Don't Get Murdered. Oh, did you? Um, Yes, and they are the narrators of the audiobook, so mm. it's it gives you a real um, taste for what the podcast would be like. And um, I'm not a true crime reader or fan of it, but I enjoyed the uh, audiobook because it was kind of a memoir as well as um, talking about true crime. So they brought in um, events from their own lives that um, worked, and so. It was it wasn't all funny. It was a lot of serious um, discussion, but um, the way they they spoke about it made it really a pleasure to listen to. So, yeah. I love listening I to them. It. And I got it from the library audiobook download. So anyone? Can I I actually saw the book downstairs in nonfiction, so I have seen it like displayed on the shelf <laughs> down there too. I think in both cases, because I encourage people who ordered in that department to order their books. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, I think Jessica was going to go next. Okay. 
Um, I, so, oh, no, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it was Christina, right? Okay. Christina, sorry. No, no worries. Um, okay, so I, my first one is the Red or Dead podcast. So that's red as in like you read a book in the past. Uh, so the Red or Dead podcast, uh, it's put out by Book Riot. It is a bi-weekly mystery fiction podcast. It's hosted by Nusra Javid and uh, Kate McLean. Uh, it's set in like a discussion format. So there's a little bit of check-in, like how things in the world are going, how they're doing, uh, what new releases are coming out that you might want to put on your radar. And then they usually break it down into a subtopic. So for example, they really recently have one about um, like mixed media format books. So books that might include um, a documentation, some photos, you know, um, physical pieces of evidence within the book that kind of make you feel like you're, you know, doing the work alongside the story's detectives. Um, this podcast, so it's dedicated to the worlds of mystery and thriller literature. Um, what I like about the podcast is that I always add at least one, if not more books um, each week that they recommend um, to my to be read pile, my TBR pile. Um, they do such a great job of pitching the mysteries and the thrillers without giving too much away. Like it's just enough that I'm like, oh, okay, I need to figure out what's gonna happen next. Um, they, I recently listened to their most anticipated releases of 2021 and I placed a lot of holds. Um, the two of them are writers for Book Riot. So you can listen to their podcast as well as find them on Book Riot. I actually have watched that before too. And after after watching it, I found myself placing holds on books. And, and, and then we discussed it, I think, afterwards. And we placed holds on pretty much the same books. So placed a ton from the 2021 anticipated reads list. And they all started <laughs> yes. coming in this month. I did I did the same thing too. I did. But it's good. I love finding these podcasts that that tell me about different books because I love books. And most people that come to the library do. You know, great, uh, Jessica. Now your your turn. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. So um, I was gonna talk about um, one podcast that I find very entertaining. Um, it's called Drunk Booksellers, and um, the two that hosted are Kim and Emma, but they are probably 10, 15 years younger than me. So a lot of the books that they listen to or talk about or recommend, I don't know if I'd actually read them, but I find them entertaining because they are unfiltered. Um, they, you know, talk about what they're drinking as the podcast, you know, before it starts. And the people that they interview are other booksellers and, um, you know, work in bookstores. And they, you know, it's just, they'll talk about a display, which isn't funny, but like they tell stories and like just different um, experiences they've had and st so I find them entertaining um, so um, I would I mean if you're younger like 15 years younger than me then I would read it um, but my favorite is moms don't have time to read books um, and it's more my my style as far as um, I've listened to interviews with Ellen Hildebrand um, and the woman who um, who the host of it is Zibby Owens and she's a mother of four. So I connect better with her and her interviews are more my style, my speed. Um, and I have actually um, read a lot of the books that, you know, of the authors that she has interviewed. So I, I really like hers too. Great. Um, well, when, when you said you were planning to, t to mention the drunk booksellers, I, I had to, um, check out the drunk librarians because um, you know that's another podcast. Uh, so they're, they're anonymous, librarian A and librarian B. So um, yeah, unfiltered is a good way to describe them. Um, I think they started out having cocktails, themed cocktails um, to drink during their recording, um, matching the books they were talking about, but now they just drink wine. They said. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of devolved into just, um, just some cheap wine and talking about books. So it's kind of a fun one, um, you know, just along the same lines. Yeah. So I think now I was planning to talk first about one that is a little different 
a lot of those podcasts are talking about um, other books. Um, this one that I wanted to mention was um, Audiobook Break, it's called, by Audiophile Magazine. Um, so Audiophile Magazine is a, a review um, website and magazine reviews only audiobooks. Um, and they partnered with Overdrive um, to provide the free downloads for young adult um, audio during the summers. Um, so this is a new podcast for them. Uh, and they were thinking about how books used to be serialized and come out chapter by chapter and people had to wait for the next chapter to be printed before they could find out what happened. Uh, and they realized that that would be a good format for a podcast. Um, so they decided to release some of their, um, they partnered with an uh, with audiobook publisher to release uh, as a podcast, a chapter of the audiobook um, with, uh, three times a week. So they decided to start out with David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. So um, you can listen to a chapter with each um, episode. Um, they're only up to chapter 11 right now. So it's really just started. And um, it's the professional recording um, of the audiobook, um, which happened to be one I had listened to. And it really is great. So um, I actually got hooked on audiobooks when I listened to a serialized um, novel uh, over the live, uh, the radio over 30 years ago. So this kind of brought me back uh, to those days. Um, so with a podcast, you don't have to worry about tuning in at a certain time of day on the radio. You can listen to it anytime at your own convenience as much as little as you want. And uh, so if you've ever, you know, been thinking of trying a podcast, um, or if you've always meant to read David Copperfield, but you never have, or you want to read it again, this one might be a, a podcast for you to try. Uh, it's called The Audiobook Break uh, by Audiophile Magazine. That uh, sounds good. Yeah. Melissa. No. Yeah, so I wanted to mention um, the first one I wanted to recommend was LeVar Burton Reads. It's hosted by LeVar Burton. And it's actually surprising to me that I like it because he reads short fiction stories. The podcast lasts about about an hour, but I don't read short stories and I don't listen to audiobooks. And yet I love this. <laughs> but if anyone remembers LeVar Burton from Reading Rainbow on PBS, this basically is a Reading Rainbow for adults. So, you know, he's a fabulous actor. He, his diction is impeccable. Um, he just has a really nice way about him. He's easy to listen to. And I find that I just get lost in these stories. I, you know, when COVID started a year ago, I started walking the neighborhood, for walking with my dog or walking by myself. And I've started listening to these to LeVar Burton. And honestly, I am totally in the story and I'm back home before I know it. So um, it, it's they're just great. Now this morning I listened to, just in preparation for this, Little Man by Michael Cunningham. And basically it was a retelling of the Rumpelstiltskin fairy tale. But what's nice, what LeVar Burton does is before the story, he gives a little introduction. And then afterwards he gives a little commentary on the story. And with this one, you know, he brought out, I really didn't pick up on it, but it was a different narrative for Rump the Rumpelstiltskin story. And so he applied it to how really as humans, we need to look at through another person's eyes. We need to take the other narrative from time to time because that's what develops empathy in us. So I love these little um, thoughts that he gives because it, it, it get, just gets me thinking. So not only are the stories entertaining, but they make you think a little bit too. So yeah, but I'm, I'm sure it has to do with this voice too, Melissa, because oh. if you're listening to someone and you don't like their voice, so, because like books on CDs, I can't listen to some of them because of the voice or well, whoever's telling the story, but I'm sure he is great to listen to. He is, yes. And like I said, I, you just get lost in his story. And I know, I think Christina has listened to him. Carly Absolutely. To him. I'm, I'm in agreement with, he really, he brings something to a short story and I, it's, just like his reading Rainbow Days. Um, I listened to one recently, it was actually a three-parter. Um, it was The Mother of Invention uh, by Nettie Okorafor, and then he followed up and did an interview with the author. 
Um, but the, the type of short story that it was, it was like a science fiction, kind of like an Afrofuturism science fiction. And it was not something I would have necessarily picked up having just read the synopsis, but then he tells it and he really like puts you into the story. It's just, it's a great, uh, you know, hour of distraction. Now I want to listen to it. <laughs> I think I listened to the same one and he changes voices and changes accents. And oh, everything. I love that. He does the accents and the voices. Those are the types of things with transcendence audience. Transcendence or something. Ah, yeah, Is like, that the name of it? Transcendence? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. And it was so good. I really like, and I don't like short stories either, but I love these. Well, and what's nice is he picks so many different genres. You know, he's got mystery, he's got comedy, he's got science fiction, fantasy, all those. So the, I, you know, I haven't listened to all of them because they're not all my thing, but uh, the ones I've listened to, I've really enjoyed. Carleen, I think you were going to talk next. Okay, the next podcast I'm going to talk about is the Poison Pen Podcast, and it's put on by Barbara Peters, who is the owner of the Poison Pen Bookstore in Scottsdale, Arizona. Barbara interviews a lot of very well-known authors, and you can tell she actually knows them personally, and she reads the books that they talk about, and they talk about everything. Uh, Barbara has had, I, I love this woman. I do. She's my hero. She's like 80 years old and she's owned her, her own that uh, bookstore for probably at least 30 years. And she has met so many different authors and she knows them all personally. And she has helped them in their careers. She can like read a book and say, this person is really good and she'll get them going in the book business and everything. And sometimes she has other authors um, interview other authors. And it's really good how she draws them out and how she knows them and just the stories they all tell. I just love this. I watch this. I listen to this thing all the time. And it's probably one of the top things I listen to. I don't know if anyone else has ever re heard that one before, but you should check it out. They have like Harlan Colbin, Lee Child, Michael Conley, David Baldacci, all authors that, that I have read before, Kristen Hanna, and all different ones, different genres and everything. But she basically focuses on mysteries, I believe. And that was the Poison Pen, right? Poison Pen Poison podcast. Pen. And she also has video recordings, too. So uh, I like those, too. And they usually, it depends. They can go, like, over, over an hour sometimes. But I just love listening to them. And a lot of times when I'm listening to them afterwards, I'll go on to OCLN, and I will uh, start placing holds on this, that, and the other thing. Because I heard so many different things that I, I was interested in. And I, that's what I love about it. Dana's next, I think. Yeah, so um, I've got another one by Book Riot. This is Hey YA. I figured as the teen librarian, I should probably recommend something for our slightly younger viewers. Um, this is a podcast that covers uh, great new books and classic young adult reads. Uh, it's hosted by Hannah Gomez, uh, who is an author at Book Riot, and Kelly Jensen, who is a former librarian, a current author at Book Riot, and she's also edited and... Um, She's been the author for three other books. Um, she's got Don't Call Me Crazy, 33 Voices Start the Conversation About Mental Health, Here We Are, Feminism for the Real World, and Body Talk, 37 Voices Explore Our Radical Anatomy. Uh, it's a discussion format that ranges anywhere from 30 minutes to sometimes an hour plus. It depends on what they're talking about or if it's one of their extra credits episodes. Um, the podcast, like I said, focuses on the news of the um, latest on-screen adaptations, and they also cover the world of young adult lit. Um, they also cover, like I said, new and classics. Um, and what I like about them is that besides helping me keep up on all areas of young adult and teens, um, they also cover a large um, scope of themes. So for example, in uh, some of their extra credits episodes, They've covered, um, let's see, oh, what would, they covered um, summer scares, they covered uh, fat girls, and they covered tweens slash younger teens. Um, 
like I said, they cover a variety of topics and it depends on if it's a shorter episode um, or a longer episode, how far they get into those topics. And don't forget a lot of adults would like to read YA too. And then there's all the crossover books that end up um, having a lot of adults read them as well as the uh, young adults. So that's well, it's funny. <clears throat> it's funny because I know I already talked about my two podcasts, but there was one podcast I came across and it's called the Children's Book Podcast. And so Matthew Winner um, actually interviewed Julia, uh, Julie Andrews and her daughter. And I love that because I love Julie Andrews and just I got lost in that hour of just listening to them and because they write books together, um, her and her daughter, and they were saying how they are reading books like from their closets, different houses and their closet. It was just really good. So, I mean, my kids are older. I don't do children's books anymore, but when I saw that, I had to listen to a couple. And then I listened to um, another author and he wrote a book about Mr. Rogers. So I forget his name, sorry. But yeah, so I mean, that's out of my comfort zone, the children's books, but entertaining. Great. Um, well, I um, next one I wanted to share was also um, short stories um, and it's the writer's voice, uh, fiction from the New Yorker magazine. So it's um, writers who have written stories in the current or just about current issue uh, and they read it aloud for the podcast. Um, so you get to hear it as they envisioned it um, in their own in their own words. Um, and also, what I like about it is, um, you know, when you listen to a podcast like The Poison Pen or one of these that, that are recommending books all the time that you keep adding books to, that you need to read, this one it's actually helping me keep up with my stack of unread magazines. By I can listen to the story instead of um, reading it. Um, so I also um, wanted to mention that um, the New Yorker has another podcast, or well, actually they have several, but these two um, I wanted to mention. This That one was called The Writer's Voice. So that's the current issue story read by the author of the story. Then they have one called Fiction, which is um, one writer takes and picks a, a, a story from the archive of the magazine written by a different author. So they have a little, um, discussion of it, just like LeVar Burton, uh, as you were saying, and, and the others. Um, so they can give a little, have a little discussion about it as well as you hear the story itself. So I've really been um, enjoying that. Uh, and I didn't realize that we had others that were, were short stories. So I think that it's turned out to be a popular, popular podcast format. Yeah. Um, I think, let's see, who is next? Melissa. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll go on. Um, another one I listen to is Mo Bituaries. It's Mo Rocca. He's the host. I don't know if you know him from the CBS Sunday Morning Show. He's a correspondent, a humorist, journalist, that type of person. But it's based on his book of the same name, Mo Bituaries, Great Lives Worth Reliving. And he talks about people and things of the past that have always intrigued him. So it, it's, they're really well done. He, he's well researched, he's interesting, he's funny. Um, and they have a, a wide variety, you know, that Audrey Hepburn, um, Sammy Davis Jr. One that I really enjoyed was The Orphan Train. So that was more on a, a thing, not a person. But I was familiar with The Orphan Train because I had read the book by Christina Baker Klein. And of course, it was a part of American history I knew nothing about. So when I read about it, I was fascinated, horrified. You know, I, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but they took orphan children and sent them out west to be adopted by other families. Um, and but he in, he interviews a real life rider of the orphan train um, because it was like the late 1800s, so it was right before she died, and it was just really interesting and tying it in with other books I've read. And if anyone is a child growing up in the 70s, like I was watched a lot of TV. Um, he addressed, you know, what happened to Chuck Cunningham on Happy Days <laughs> because he was the oldest son. And then one episode, he just disappeared. No one knew what happened to him. He talks about the two Darrens on Bewitched. So um, even though it's not related to books, if you are, you know, into that kind of 70s trivia, things like that, it was really um, 
entertaining. So he, he, that's an entertaining podcast. And did you that's say good. it was a book also? Oh, yeah, the book on. also is Mobituaries. I personally, I haven't read it, but I have seen it. Um, so you can definitely get it through our library. <laughs> so Carleen had another one, I think. Okay. Uh, my next podcast is called Get Booked, and, and that is put on by bookriot.com, which Christina has done a couple of today. Um, this podcast does personalized reading recommendations for people that are looking for something new to read. People send in inquiries saying what they do and don't like in a book, and they like a certain book and would like to read something similar. Uh, they either send along recommendations or they discuss it on the show. The show is hosted by Book Riot's Amanda Nelson and Jean Nothington, and uh, they both work at Book Riot. Uh, one of them just came on full time. I can't remember which one it was. Uh, they each give recommendations with great descriptions. It kind of reminds me of when uh, patrons came come to the desk in the library looking for their next good read, and uh, they they do really good descriptions of it, but they, you know, they'll get this letter that says, oh, my father used to, um, he reads, he's been reading nonfiction for a long time, but he used to read fantasy fiction and he wants to get back into this. And he used to read this guy, but uh, he's read all of their books. Is there anyone you can recommend? And then they'll each come up with recommendations with really good descriptions. And they go by exactly what you say. If you don't like something in a book, they make sure that's not in a book. And I, I really like it. I think it's great um, just to have, you know, some way that you can send a thing and you can say, I like this, I don't like that. And, you know, and I, I think it's really good. I don't know. You should check it out. Great. Well, the next one, I think I'm next. Um, Christina, you didn't have another one, did you? Oh. Just the two. I, I Book related ones, just the two. Yeah, we, we have so many podcasts we could talk about. We had to limit it to bookish podcasts. And even then there was so many. Um, the next one is I just wanted to mention was is also a book riot um, podcast. So um, it's just we should just mention that um, they are a book review and recommendation um, site. They have all sorts of book lists um, on their website, reading recommendations um, and reading related articles. So if you're not familiar with it, um, you might want to check out Book Riot. And then they have um, various um, ways you can be a member or participate, you can subscribe to their free newsletters um, by email. There's all the, the, and then they have all of these different podcasts. So the, the one I was going to mention was all the books. So uh, yes. um, this, um, it's a weekly podcast. So it's described as a news and a talk news and talk show about what's new, cool and worth talking about in the world of books and reading. So they really focus on the new releases, the books that just come out that week or, or you know, within that, that time frame. Um, so it's kind of like listening in on a conversation um, between two people who really just read a lot and read a lot of different kinds of books and, and, and love to talk books. Um, but you, as you get to know their personalities and their reading tastes and you can kind of decide, like Jessica said, are, these, are they reading the books I, I would like or not? Um, you get to know their personalities and they talk about other things too, not just books. Um, so you, you get to kind of know them. Uh, so if you like to stay current with what's popular, um, they're likely to be talking about the books that are going to get buzzed in other places too. Um, the, that might be the hot titles. So you might want to get your holds in early if you hear them mention it um, on their podcast. They, they're careful to avoid spoilers. Um, and I have noticed in other podcasts that if they plan on revealing anything that might be a spoiler, they usually do warn you um, so that you can, if you decide you might want to read that book, you don't want to hear the spoilers, you'll save it till after you've read the book, you could go back to it and hear what they, what they had to say about it. Um, and then I just wanted to say they also have um, a, an episode each week focused on backlist titles. So they don't want all the shiny new books tend to get all the attention. Uh, so they have this other episode each week that brings, um, you know, kind of features some older titles. Uh, so they have a wide range of what the uh, most recent one I listened to uh, talked about um, a cross between 
a canticle for Leibowitz and um, a Tom Clancy book. So it was about monks in a in a submarine uh, with a with the last nuclear missile after you know some kind of apocalyptic event had happened and they were in this submarine breaking down for years and so it's just a very uh, unusual title um, but then they also talk about um, books in other genres and more more general fiction too so um, so I recommend that one is called all the books um, and I, we should say most of these or all of these that we've talked about are available through um, uh, most anywhere you would get your podcasts, um, Apple Podcasts, Google Google Podcasts, Google Play, uh, Spotify. Uh, you can other find places. a lot on uh, YouTube, too. Some oh, of them yeah. you can go right to their website as well. Yeah. Right. So you can, you can find them um, in various ways. So, um, so I think we had, do we have... One more from Melissa? Uh, yeah, I had one more that I, I thought I would mention. Uh, the Inside Flap is the title. It's hosted by Dave Medicus, Laura <laughs> Medicus, and Andrew Dowd. They're out of Colorado. I'm not sure. I mean, they're not authors or um, I think one is a teacher. One owns an interior design company, whatever. But um, what I liked about them, they do author interviews, which I always am interested to listen to. Um, they give book recommendations. They give an audio book of the week that they recommend, things like that. But they've had some great authors on there. Uh, I just listened to Susan Meisner, who just wrote her latest release is um, The Nature of Fragile Things, which um, I had read, but I was, I was in the process of reading it. And the same thing, they didn't give any spoilers. They didn't give away anything, but um, it was a really nice interview with her. Uh, Frederick Backman, who just wrote Anxious oh, People. Him. Yeah, isn't he good? And yeah. yeah. He wrote um, A Man Called Uwe, which most people have, or a lot of people have read. Uh, he was a very good interview. Uh, she in, They interviewed Lisa Gardner, J.A. Jantz, Faye Kellerman, C.J. Box. So it's all um, some big names there that they get. Um, I will give a disclaimer. They usually spend like the first 10 minutes talking about their lives. So, uh, you know. <laughs> Once you get through that, you get to the good meaty uh, book discussions. But yeah, so that's the inside flap, and they are—they're good to listen to. I think you find—I think you find that with a lot of podcasts, though, Melissa, that people talk like that because um, it just draws you in. It lets you learn who you're talking to, you know, mm -hmm. and they do that with my favorite murder, and I love that show—just the banter back and forth. I love that stuff. Yeah. Well, we, we, while we've been exploring the world of podcasts here, and like I said, we had to narrow it down to bookish um, podcasts for this talk, but even so, um, there, there are hundreds of options out there. So um, if you're ready to explore, um, you might try one of the ones we recommended, or um, you can just start exploring on your own and you will find uh, something that strikes your fancy. But before we close, I did want to mention, um, since we all work at the library, I wanted to um, highlight a couple of library podcasts. Um, and there, again, there's, there's many, many of them. Um, but I wanted to mention The Librarian is In. It's the New York Public Library um, podcast. Uh, and it may be one of the best known, uh, best known ones. Um, it's about books, culture, and what to read next. Uh, they have new episodes every two weeks. Uh, and some of their titles are, are clever, like When Pushkin Comes to Shove or The Dog-Eared Days of Summer. Uh, and they also have author interviews, um, as some of the others have mentioned. Um, and they, um, they, they, they just have a wide range um, of interests, again, and a wide range of titles and authors that they discuss on their podcast. So they are entertaining to listen to. Uh, and then more, more close by, the Swampscott Public Library um, has a podcast uh, called Librarians by the Sea. So um, they have recommendations for adult and young adult um, reading interests. And there's even a cookbook episode. So um, you can listen through their library's website. Um, and they also post full transcripts of each episode. So you don't have to take notes of what you hear. Uh, they don't seem to have it available through the um, 
Apple or Google or you know other, but you can listen right on their website uh, using um, the player on the website. So I wanted to give them a shout out. Uh, so thank you for listening uh, to our bookish podcast conversation. Um, a full list of all the podcasts that we mentioned will be posted along with the video. Um, so we'll be sure to let you know if we decide to start up our own podcast, their public library uh, thoughts or some such catchy title uh, in the future. And uh, thank you all for joining um, the conversation and thank you all for listening.